Today we're reading some more Am I the Gay Hole and it's going to be so fun. We're back again on this beautiful subreddit in for an absolute adventure and let's get into it. Enjoy guys. Am I the gay hoffer blowing up on my husband's friend after her wife died? My 36 female husband Ian, 44 male, is close friends with a woman named Jenna. They've been friends for a long time, before Ian and I got together. So I know her fairly well too, but we really have nothing in common. And we're not exactly friends. Jenna's wife Laura sadly and somewhat suddenly passed away in March. She was terminally ill but responded to treatment very well and was expected to survive another 2-5 to five years. She's been leaning on Ian heavily for support, which I understand, but she's been at her house every single day since and even sleeping in her guest room most nights because she doesn't want to be home alone which would be okay except she's getting more and more passive aggressive towards me and weirdly territorial of Ian oh god I've reminded myself that I don't think I could stand to see a happy couple for months if I lost Ian and to be patient it's not personal my birthday was on Sunday I got home Saturday after a morning out and Jenna was there I was making small talk when I asked Ian what time he'd made dinner reservations for the next day Jenna inserted herself right here and asked Ian if he was going to be out the next day and he said yes she started panicking and saying that she couldn't and she wasn't ready to spend an evening alone. I was going to tell her she could still hang out here while we were gone and she looked at me and said, don't you have any effing friends you can go with? What the hell? And I just blew up. Don't you have any other freaking friends you can go bother? And so on. She called me selfish for monopolizing my husband. It's OP's husband. Are you out of your mind? They're not monopolizing him. And I had enough and I told her to get the hell out of my house and to not come back ever. Ian had been trying to calm things down between us but it spiraled out of control fast and he ended up escorting Jenna out and telling her that he'd come visit her in a few days, but he would be backing my decision because of how she spoke to me. I was happy for his support, and I still am, but it's been a few days and I feel sort of bad all around about it. I should have been more understanding of her, but I also feel like she should treat me more respectfully, and I'm not really sure if I overreacted. Oh no, OP, you definitely did not overreact. What's wrong with them, for real? No, you didn't do anything wrong, OP. Monopolizing your husband? Your husband is your bloody husband. Jenna can take a high. Like, for real? How dare she talk to you like that in your own house? Nah. <laughs> oh, you're so not the a-hole, OP. And obviously Jenna wants there to be more than a friendship with your husband. Like this comment says, wow, not the a-hole. Nobody's talking to me like that in my own home. Disagree with people saying that Jenna's not an a-hole here. Needing support and asking for it are fine, but she's crossed the line to being hostile towards her friend's spouse. She got a well-deserved get the hell out. And good for Ian for backing his wife on this one. Yeah, 100%. That's completely different different than asking for support or being in a really awful situation. That does not mean you can say stuff like that to people. Oh my god, the audacity. The top comment says not the a-hole. She was so far out of line and especially in your own home. I'd also sit down with your husband and talk about it. To me personally, it really seems like she likes your husband more than just a friend. I understand that she had a wife, but maybe she's bi and hasn't been open about it. The comment under that says not the a-hole. Jenna was out of line, but it's also good that you're reconsidering your actions. This one's a tough situation for everybody involved. There are no simple good guys or bad guys here. I was a young widow myself and those first few months were a blur. The things that upset me then, I can see how I overreacted and I took things personally that I shouldn't have. I was irrational at times and I got super emotional over the slightest things. None of this gave me a pass to say or do anything to others. And the same applies to Jenna. I'm glad that your husband backed you. That's a good sign for your relationship. I would tell him how much you appreciate his support because it must have been hard for him to escort his good friend out when she's suffering. It was the right thing, but it was probably hard for him to do. Talk to him about how he can support Jenna moving forward with better boundaries. Get an agreement between the two of you on how you both interact with Jenna and support her. Eventually Jenna will be in a better space and you may be able to reconcile to a certain degree for the sake of your husband. Yeah, a million percent. Like of course, there's no excuse for what they said. And you're definitely not the a-hole OP. You can't let people talk to you like that. But yeah, hopefully over time things do get better if you guys do stay friends with Jenna. Wow, what a wild start to the episode. The next one is called Am I the a-hole for telling my husband that if he pays me my hourly rate, I'll do more house work. I'm a steam fitter, but I've been at it for a while and I'm in supervision. With bonuses and incentives, but not counting benefits, I earn over $100 an hour. I also work out of town. I started doing that once the kids were old enough to take care of themselves with their dad at home. So when my youngest was in middle school and the oldest was a junior in high school. It's great. Our retirement savings are piling up and we've been able to splurge on the kids and ourselves. My husband is upset, however, because I decided to pay for a cleaning lady. He and I discussed it and we agreed that him and the kids didn't do a great job at keeping the house tidy while I was away. I hate 
hated coming home to a mess. I caused a few fights because it was like they expected me to come home and clean up after them. Having her is fantastic. I come home to a clean house and I'm happier. My kids have more time to study and do extracurriculars. They still have chores and they're still expected to clean up after themselves. My husband came to me last time I was home and said that we should cut back on the service when I'm home. That I should be doing more housework. He thinks that we're wasting money. I said that I work 14 days in a row and that those are 13 hour days. Yeah, it is mostly paperwork, but his job as a teacher isn't much more physically challenging. I said that I could offer him two options. If he wanted, we could completely get rid of the service and him and the kids could make sure the house was in good shape when I got home. Or he could pay me my hourly rate to do the extra housework on the days that I'm off. He's upset with me and says that I'm being financially manipulative. I think if he and the kids actually did what they were supposed to do when I was away, none of this would be an issue. Yeah, no, you're not the a-hole OP. It shouldn't be entirely your responsibility. The top comment says, so you can afford it, everything gets done, everybody has free time, nobody has to do crap when they don't want to, there aren't any fights over it, I mean there really isn't any downside and everybody wins, him getting upset because you said that if the maid goes he'll have to do his fair share is very telling, you're not home to make the messes but you're supposed to work that much and come and clean up after him just because he wants to save money while getting to sit on his ass, people like your husband always reinforce my decision to stay single, not the yay hole, edit, oh lord people are getting really carried away in the comments, not surprised because it's reddit but come on now, we don't know the husband at all and only have to judge going by the contents of this post. It's entirely possible the husband really does want to save money because he's cheap, but he's just a self-absorbed, lazy, thoughtless dunce wanting to do so at OP's expense. What's that saying? Never attribute malice that which can be explained by stupidity or something like that. It doesn't make sense, but some people lack the logic chip. Still the a-hole, but this doesn't automatically mean he's an evil woman hater on a power trip that can't stand his wife so watching her suffer and serve gets his pee pee hard. Some of you drama llamas need to get a grip. Stop projecting your prejudices and bad experiences onto everybody else and go touch some grass. Wow, that's a good comment. <laughs> like we read a lot of stuff like that. And yeah, you read so many comments as I'm sure you guys have too, where people definitely do get carried away. And yeah, we don't know these people. So yeah, definitely making a whole bunch of assumptions is never good. But from the information given on the post, yeah, the husband is definitely the a-hole and OP is definitely not the a-hole. Yeah, like this comment says, not the a-hole. A relationship is meant to go both ways. Your husband sounds like he wants you to do all the work without putting in effort himself. Poor form. Yeah, definitely. The next one is called, Am I the a for telling my son to pay back the money that he spent on his online girlfriend? I, 45 male, have a son, 16 male, that loves to play video games. I got him a PlayStation 5 for his birthday last year and he plays online with friends. He's been telling me that he's been chatting online with a girl, 15 female, and they've slowly started dating. They don't talk over the microphone as hers broke and he has no idea what she looks like. I told him to be careful on what he sends her and not to give her any personal information. My son has his own credit card with a limit on it and I told him to not go over the limit and to only use it for emergencies. I got the credit card bill for this month and there were charges repeatedly for the game he plays in charges of $50 to $100. I was furious as he gets gift cards for the games on his birthday and Christmas. I approached him with the bill and I asked him what the charges were. He told me that his girlfriend wanted new stuff for the game and would break up with him if he didn't purchase them. Oh no. It's probably some random person. I told him that I would pay the charges and he'd have to pay me back the money. I told him that there were many jobs that would hire him. He got angry with me that he wouldn't have time to work as he plays sports and school. I told him that if I was able to balance working and school, he would have no problem doing it. I took his credit card away. He's not speaking to me now. Only if it's in regards to being picked up or needing a ride to see his friends. He's mad that I'm making him pay the money back and get a job. Am I the a for telling my son to pay back the money he spent on his online girlfriend? No, of course not. But more so to the point, your son is being taken advantage of OP. It's probably probably not a 15 year old girl. Your son hasn't even seen what they look like. And of course anybody's not gonna break up with somebody if they don't buy them something in a bloody game. Your son is getting scammed. And the fact that your son thinks he has an online girlfriend, like even from reading this, I'm almost 99% sure that he doesn't. It's just somebody taking advantage of him and trying to get money and stuff out of him. The top comment says, your son is 100% being scammed here. There's no girlfriend and you desperately need to step in and stop this situation. And OP said, I will. I have have spoken to him about the dangers of scammers online before. I'll have him block all communication if they're still chatting. And like the comment under that says, lol her microphone is broken. That's because it's a man. Haha, ha, not the a-hole. You did the right thing. He's getting catfished big time. Yeah, a million percent that's what's going on. Oh no, my microphone's broken. Can you please buy me stuff or I'm gonna break up with you? Yeah, that's not a 15 year old girl. There's another comment here that says not the a-hole. Well then no, you're not an a-hole. But I'm a bit concerned that you are as a parent. Not concerned that you're not more concerned about your son being catfished and not confident in this decision.
question. Info, is somebody saying that you are an a-hole for this other than your son? I would imagine that most parents will be pretty confident in this decision. And OP said, he's complained to my parents and my mum is telling me to lighten up on everything. Yeah, that's not the answer. His mother is no longer in the picture. I definitely will have to rethink everything. Yeah, like the comment underneath says, your mum probably doesn't understand the internet enough to realise that this 15-year-old girl is probably not a 15-year-old girl, but an experienced scammer. Yeah, good luck on putting a stop to all of this OP. And do not listen to your mum and lighten up about this, unless you want to have all of your money stolen. But yeah, you're not the a-hole OP. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for not returning money my ex-husband sent to me mistakenly? A few days ago, my ex-husband mistakenly transferred two payments of $8,700 and 9275 Okay, so I am assuming that it's dollars. He did this around 7.40 a.m. in the morning, and I didn't notice because I just worked a double night shift, and I was getting ready for bed, so my phone was charging on the nightstand. At the same time, my four children were at my parents, so I planned to sleep away half the day. I guess he realized his mistake around 8.30 a.m., and by then, I was deep asleep. I woke up at around 4 p.m. to at least 100 missed calls and maybe 150 messages, asking and begging him to send back the money. My initial thoughts were to send it back, but then I remembered he owed me 12000 and hasn't paid me back since I lended it to him four years ago, and he's had a million excuses why he can't pay me back, and yet I always see him living it up. I kept the amount that he owed me, and I only returned 5975 and I told him I deducted his debt. Since then, I've had him call me every name in the book because this was apparently money that he was saving to buy his girlfriend an engagement ring, and also pay for the engagement venue, etc. So according to him, he had to tell her. This then led to it ruining the surprise engagement that he planned for the next weekend. His girlfriend has been bad-mouthing me, and it's caused a bit of a crap storm with me having to shut down my social media. And even his parents, who I had a cordial relationship with, have been impacted by it. I discussed the situation with a friend and a colleague, and it was overheard by another colleague, and he's called what I did a ding-dong head move. And I guess he shared it with a couple of other people, and now I'm not so sure on whether I'm being an a-hole or not. Is this an a-hole move? Edit, the money was loaned to him after our divorce. Well, I've been divorced for seven years, and I loaned him the money four years ago after he'd lost his job and fell behind on bills and his rent. This has nothing to do with child support payments, of which he's also behind on, and that's being handled by Family Court and the child support company. There are messages of him asking for a loan, and it included a repayment plan and a time frame, but he never stuck to it, so there is a legal trail if he ever decided to involve the law, but I seriously doubt that he would because it would cost him way more to sue me, and I think I would have won in court since I only deducted his debt to me. Yes, he is the father of our four kids. I also didn't deduct the overdue child support payments because that's being handled by the courts, and I don't want to muddy the water and get myself into trouble. The child support company is aware of his arrears, and if I'm not mistaken, he'll need to start paying soon or they'll start garnishing his wages. Edit 2, yeah, I could have sued him for the debt, but it would have cost me way more to hire a lawyer. Suing somebody isn't cheap. Lawyers cost real money and a lawsuit takes real time. Edit 3, when I say, then I remembered he owed me money. You have to understand, I just woken up after working a double shift. I'm a nurse, and I was still kind of exhausted when I woke up. I could barely remember my own name, let alone anything else, so my initial instinct was to return the money, but I quickly got to my senses. Yeah, okay, so that definitely is a bit rough, but he 100% brought this on himself. You know, like, he can't really argue with something like this, OP. Like, if he didn't want this to happen, he should have paid you back. The top comment says, to be fair, he's owed you 12 grand for four years. Priority should have been clearing the debt and then saving for an engagement ring, especially when he clearly had the money. Also, surely he can find an engagement ring for 6,000. Not the a-hole, you only kept what you were owed. And OP also said here, yes, he is the father of all four of our kids. He's also behind on child support. His priorities are always himself and whatever new woman that he's with. That is until she's no longer shiny and new. Yeah, and like this comment says, 12 grand without interest. She did him a favor. Yeah, OP didn't even take any interest. Like, yeah, definitely sucks for your ex-husband, but he also walked straight into this. Like, if you owe somebody 12 grand, you owe them 12 grand. And I feel like if you stress that fact, OP, then I don't understand why people would say you are the a-hole. Like, hey, he owed me 12 grand. He obviously wasn't planning on paying it back. Like what, you feel like you can take $12,000 off somebody and tell them you're gonna pay them back but never actually pay them back? Nah, get out of here. I feel like he's lucky that OP didn't take the child support payments as well. Yeah, not the a-hole, OP. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for sleeping in on my girlfriend's birthday? I, male 25, have been dating my girlfriend, female 22, for about two months, and she got extremely upset with me after sleeping in on her birthday. We agreed to have her birthday at my house, inviting all of her young college friends I don't really trust yet, and even having a DJ friend come. Despite noise concerns, I agreed to it because I wanted her party to be special and she had no other option. I spent nine hours straight cleaning my house top to bottom in preparation, and I even made edibles for the party. Last week I had to fly out for five days on a business trip. They ended up scheduling it on top of her birthday 
birthday after I agreed to host it. I fought to rework the entire project schedule and I got multiple other people to change plans just so I could be back in time for the day of her birthday and then the party the next day. This trip turned out to be one of the most mentally taxing projects of my career. Both flights in and out were red eyes and the work required me to do everything late at night. As late as 6am on a few nights, I worked 62 hours and I got an average of 4 hours of sleep per night in a 5 day span. One night I only got 1 hour of sleep before working 12 hours. I stayed in sketchy hotels, I got an eye infection and I even ran into my bipolar ex that emotionally traumatized me. Needless to say, I was drained mentally and physically. I took the day off after I got back so I could hang out on her actual birthday. She spent the entire week with her mum shopping and hanging out. We never agreed on a specific time or even plan on what we were doing. I woke up early to a work call to fix one last thing from the project, said good morning to my girlfriend and we talked about getting coffee at some point. My body just couldn't physically stay awake anymore and I ended up falling asleep for another three hours. Finally, I get up, get her some flowers and I head to her place to take her for her favourite lunch, see a movie that she wanted and get her favourite cake. When I got there, she was extremely upset and crying really hard because I slept so long. When I tried to explain, she dismissed my sleep deprivation because she doesn't get good sleep in general and said, Welcome to my life. She didn't thank me for the flowers, lunch, movie or cake. I felt like I've been giving 110% to everyone and everything and yet I'm still getting yelled at. It brought back feelings of never being good enough and walking on eggshells that my traumatizing ex gave me. She even told me later that negative reinforcement works better. Yeah, you're not the a-hole OP and to be honest, they sound like they kind of suck and I don't really feel like you need somebody like this. The way that they're absolutely only thinking about themselves in this situation is such a red flag. Oh wow, the top comment with 16,000 upvotes. This is a very obvious case of breakup ASAP. You don't need this in your life. If this is what she's like after two months, she'll make your life a nightmare. Find a nice, well-adjusted girl. Yeah, pretty much OP. Like, you're obviously super thoughtful. You're going to huge amounts of effort for this. And what, they're upset because you literally couldn't stay awake? Nah, you don't need stuff like that. The next one is called, Am I the gay hole for ruining a family dinner because of my golden child sister? I, female 17, have a younger sister, Emily, female 16. Even though they don't say it explicitly, Emily is obviously my parents' favorite child. I can understand why they're proud of Emily. She is a straight-A student, has the lead roles in student theater, swims competitively, is popular at school, and very, very good looking. Also, by the way, this one's labeled as a-hole. That's kind of a rare occurrence at the moment. I, on the other hand, am probably more plain. I work hard at school, but I'm not as outgoing or intelligent as Emily, and I don't excel at any extracurriculars like she does. My parents always celebrate Emily. We have certificates of her work on the fridge, always have outings and meals to commemorate her achievements, and attend all of her swim events and plays. I know my parents love me, but I don't get close to that level of attention even when I do work hard. The other night we went out with my parents, uncle, aunt, and cousins. We just been to one of Emily's shows and she recently got accepted onto a summer scheme that she was wanting to complete. The whole meal revolved around discussing Emily and how proud everybody was of her accomplishments. I don't think I was mentioned once. I'm usually more reserved or just bite my tongue. But midway through the meal I shouted out, maybe if you paid more attention to me and not just your golden child, you'd have more things to celebrate. Everybody just sort of went silent and my mum said that we discussed this when we got home and not to ruin the meal. Emily looked shocked and close to crying. To say the rest of the meal was awkward would be putting it lightly. When we got home my parents shouted at me for embarrassing them and said that Emily deserves to be celebrated and that if I did something that merited celebration, I'd receive the same treatment. I said how unfair this was and nothing I do gets recognized regardless. Emily joined in and said that she works hard and deserves to be recognized for that. And as the older sister, I should grow up and actually work for once if I want her success. I haven't spoken to Emily since then and my parents are still annoyed at me for ruining the meal. Am I the gay hole? Yeah, I don't know. I don't feel like you should have done that in the way that you did that at the dinner. But yeah, it also sounds like your parents are kind of a-holes. The top comment says, I feel for you because I once blew up because I didn't get a big graduation party like my sister, who everybody loves and even flew internationally to attend. But it was after I said I didn't want a big party because I'm really uncomfortable being in the spotlight. So yeah, I understand the conflict in one's mind, but you have to be realistic. It's not your sister's fault that she's accomplished. If you both achieved the same thing and they celebrated her and not you, then yeah, that would be crappy parenting. But ignoring her achievements just because you didn't achieve similarly, that would also be crappy parenting. You were rude and you were unkind to your sister who has done nothing but exist as herself. I hate to say it, but those of us who are quiet and don't focus on distinguishing ourselves simply don't give people as much material to work with when it comes to taking an interest and celebrating. You the yay hole you deserve to be the focus of praise and interest some of the time. But if you don't do things that can be highlighted as different from the daily grind, that's probably going to be limited to your birthday and hitting standard milestones, like graduating high school or getting a new job. Yeah, and then also like this comment here, how old are people here? Celebrate your children regardless. Celebrate big wins and small wins and everything in between. Wrong for the outburst 
just being at dinner, but to everybody saying you haven't accomplished anything so you shouldn't be celebrated in any way. Yikes, I hope your teenagers who haven't emotionally matured yet. Yeah, that's right. They definitely deserve to be celebrated. And it doesn't mean that you have to bloody achieve something for your parents to give you attention. That's not right either. But yeah, they're definitely the a-hole for acting the way they did at dinner. That was not the way to handle it. So yeah, in this situation, I do definitely feel like you are the a-hole. But like every single post on here, it's a lot more complicated than that. This comment here, you the a-hole. This golden child phenomenon seems to be rampant on this subreddit. But I think it speaks more to one person's insecurity than it does to favoritism. Though whether true or not, this wasn't the place or method to address your feelings appropriately. The next one is called, am I the a-hole for cheating my co-worker out of a free meal? I 28 male work with this woman, Lydia, 24 female, who has a very annoying habit. She has a dating profile that she uses specifically to lure guys into buying her expensive dinners at restaurants that she wants to try. And then she ghosts them after. Lydia brags about this all the time and is never interested in actually dating, but she'll act like it to sell it. I can't stand this because it's playing with people's hearts, but Lydia thinks of it as a life hack to try food or drinks that she otherwise couldn't afford. My friend Daniel, 32 male, is also on dating sites, but for the right reasons. His late wife died a few years ago and he's just started jumping back into the dating scene. Daniel's a very sweet guy and I really want him to find a great lady for him. A few days ago, he texted me asking if I knew Lydia. They matched and they got to talking about work, which is how we found out that we worked at the same place. I told him all about Lydia's BS with the restaurant thing and I made it very clear to him that he would do best to drop things with her early on. Daniel said that he'd probably still do the date but ask for separate checks. Well, they went out this past weekend and on Monday, Lydia came into work very upset. I asked her how her date with Daniel went and she ripped into me asking if I was the one who told him not to pay for dinner. Apparently, she had Daniel take her to a high-end steakhouse and she ended up splurging. She got a drink, a full entree with a side and a dessert where Daniel just ordered a sandwich and a salad. Her bill alone came out to like $70 or something and she was almost in tears at work as she didn't expect to pay for it and now her car was low on gas. I got a little upset too as she tried to use my friend as a literal meal ticket but somehow she doesn't see it that way. Daniel told me later the date was going kind of well until he asked for separate checks and then Lydia just got weirdly cold. So now Lydia's mad at me because I told somebody about her little tactic and it backfired on her. I don't feel like I did anything wrong since it was a grieving friend I was protecting but some other people we work with said I should have stayed out of it because it was none of my business. No, 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 definitely not OP. Obviously you're not the a-hole. That's so stupid and sad. And yeah, of course Lydia acted super cold as soon as she found out she had to pay because that's the only reason she was going on a date. Yeah, like the top comment says, not the a-hole, her luck finally ran out. I question why Daniel still went ahead with the date after you clued him in, unless it was to show her up. In which case, fair play, it's my kind of petty. And OP said he did because it's been a while since he's dated and he wants to get more comfortable with dating again after his wife died. I tried to talk him out of it altogether, but he said a first date would be good for him regardless. Yeah, no, nah, you're not the a-hole, OP. And I feel like that's a good place to end today's episode. That was so fun, but it's definitely enough for today. I hope you guys had a wonderful time and let me know down below if you enjoyed. But now we need something wholesome. Can someone please explain why there's a dog on this plane? Dog on plane. Mind your own business. I paid for my ticket. Yeah, come on. How are they meant to get somewhere? Dogs can't fly. That's so cute. I love when people make Twitter profiles just for the meme. Like you see stuff like this a lot. Like, hey, I'm that dog on the plane. Stay out of it, okay? Listening to respond. Listening to understand. Wow, that's so true. Yeah, 100%. And it makes the conversation so much better too. Yeah, wow, that's a really good way of illustrating that. A table in the back of a restaurant. Introverts. Oh my God, if that isn't the truest thing ever. Like, hey, do you have a table in the back? <laughs> or against a wall? Or preferably not in the middle of the restaurant? That would be amazing, thank you. It makes the whole experience so much better. Thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like and subscribe. And the comment of the day goes to Cats Over Brats. I've been getting back into making collages again. I've made one last week and two this week. It's been fun reconnecting with that part of my creativity again after not having done it for about three years. Oh, that's so awesome. And good on you, Cats Over Brats. That sounds so fun. And yeah, it's always so nice to do creative stuff like that. Hell yeah, that's so awesome. Thank you again for the support everybody. Make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!